so we are back and we are ready to hand out some more free L's. Welcome back to Road to Master Ball Rank. I built a new team that we're going to be messing around with today. I'm pretty excited about it. I think it has uh, a chance to do pretty well. I also brought some fun stuff in case we want to mess around with like a flapple. Um, we will go through the team recap here in a minute once we can get ourselves into a battle. But I'm excited. I've been enjoying the series a lot. Uh, I think these ranked battles are actually rather interesting. So we can show them the old team info today. Um, yeah, so this episode, we're going to be kind of working with, um, I like the Gyarados, so we're going to get that thing to do kind of what Gyarados is doing this generation, which is essentially, uh, just Dynamax, get some max Airstreams up, activate that Moxie, and have a good time before, or after setting up Dragon Dances. Then we have a Halucha, uh, the Halucha has the White Herb, which allows it to negate these stat drops from close combat and also activate Unburden, so if we decide to use a speedy Halucha, uh, if the matchup looks like we need a fighting type, that's what we're going to go with. Next up, we have a Clefable. Um, kind of just pretty standard there, damage with leftovers. And then we have a Focus Sash Cinderace, which is something I haven't used before, but I'm excited to potentially try this thing out. Uh, then we have the boy Flapple, Choice Band, Hustle, basically here to just wreak havoc and just do some damage. And then last but not least, we do have the Choice Scarf Dragapult, who is returning, because I feel like that boy, that boy needs some more... Needs more use. So, alright, this is the party we're going to be working with. Not really sure how we're going to be changing up the team. I guess just kind of depending on the matchup. But we are sitting at rank 8, Great Ball tier. And uh, we're well on our way there, boys. So, trainer has already been found. Let us see what they're going to be working with. So, okay, okay, interesting. We see Ferrothorn, a Rotom Heat, the Reunigris. Uh, which is something we have not played against. Then we got the Togekiss, a Obstagoon, and then the Milotic. So, uh, the Rotom Heat is a problem for Gyarados. That is quite obvious. I don't know if we want to bring Gyarados this time. I feel like they're probably going to end up bringing that Rotom. Uh, potentially as the lead, but then also, I feel like we do see a lot of people leading off with Togekiss as well. So, we got to kind of be careful about our lead here. I think I want to lead off with the Clefable. It does... Pretty great, kind of against everything. We have Flamethrower for the Ferrothorn. And uh, I think Clefable's, Clefable's probably going to have to uh, gonna come in <laughs> and be Clefatal. Alright, alright. So we're going to lead off with you. Then we're going to bring the... I think we bring Scarf Dragapult. Should we bring, <laughs> should we bring the Flapple? Uh, not really with that Togekiss around. We um, have that Obstagoon as well. So quite interesting. I kind of want to bring the Cinderace. But... Doesn't seem all that useful. Do we want to bring Halucha potentially? Probably not. You know, let's bring the Cinderace. We got that Focus Ash. I really like that thing as kind of a, a speedy revenge killer potentially. So I think lead Clefable could be good for us in a lot of situations that they lead. Right, whether it's like Obstagoon, Fer even Ferrothorn, we have a great matchup there. Just because we can hit it hard with the Flamethrower. Um, it does great against the Rotom. And we also have Thunderbolt against like a Togekiss lead. So... They are going to Ooh, the shiny Obstagoon. Okay. You're really going to come out flexing on me like that? Okay. Well. So. Um, Clefable can take a hit from this thing for sure. And then just hit pretty hard with a Moonblast. Um, their switch in is kind of not really there. We're just going to go right for the Moonblast here. I don't know if they're going to use the Dyna turn 1. Or if Obstagoon really has much to hit us with. But I'm just going to go for the Moonblast. It seems like the safe play. And the boy chewed gum coming back and they're actually just gonna taunt us um, so that is fine we're not gonna be setting up any stealth rock today which I've actually considered using stealth rock in these ranked battles um, where it's gonna be able to knock out the obscure turn one baby I've thought about using stealth rock um, in these battles just because it does really help in breaking focus sashes sashes which I think can work really well um, being able to get rid of sashes can really turn the tide of battles but it's also tough just kind of wasting a move slot on stealth rock but it really could work out if they have sashes in the back. So, all right. One Pokemon down just takes a Moonblast. Surprisingly, that thing just stayed in. So, things are looking pretty good from the start here. As now they're going to bring in the Milotic. And uh, are we about to just Clefable all over him? Um, I, you know, I should have brought Flapple. This actually not would not have been a bad game to bring Flapple. We could go ahead and Dynamax here and just hit Thunderbolt. Or we could set up a Calm Mind. Um, but I think I kind of like... I kind of like Dynamaxing and going for the T-Ball. If they bring in my low tick, they really don't have much for us. Let's just go for a Max Lightning. These things are super bulky. Also, a shiny my low tick as well. Homegirl. Been shiny hunting. All right. 
So we're gonna make Clefable huge. Why I really like Clefable? This thing has actually been OU since the very beginning of competitive Pokemon. Well, like, red and blue. Clefable has just always been in the overused tier. And for good reason, this baby is pretty damn bulky. It hits really hard. It's got a great typing. And uh, we love Clefable. It's gonna go for a Hypnosis. <laughs> we avoid it. But, uh... Blunder policy. <laughs> I have not actually seen that yet. Um, interesting. So this thing tried to hit us with a hypnosis, which is... Wow. Interesting. I forgot that Milotic could even learn hypnosis, not gonna lie. Well... What even is blunder policy again? Raises the holder's speed by two stages when it's moved missed due to accuracy. That's actually a clutch strategy using hypnosis <laughs> with that. Damn. Well, they could try to hypnosis again and put us to sleep. Um, which I think is probably what they're gonna try to do. I mean... That's interesting. Blunder policy, huh? Well, really benefits Pokemon uh, that use low accuracy moves like that. So this thing is just going to go for a recover. And uh, you're not going to be able to recover too long. We have that electric terrain up. Thunderbolt does a decent amount of damage. Uh, re recovery is actually a good play here because you can kind of stall, stall out my Dynamax turns. But we're getting a lot of damage on this thing. And uh, yeah, this is actually unfortunate due to the fact that this damn thing is just going to recover again and kind of just waste our Dynamax. But... I guess we're just gonna keep on clicking. There's really no reason to switch out here. I don't think switching would be the play. I wish I would have brought Flapple, damn it. Should have got Granny Smith some action, but there's another recover. It's able to outspeed because of the damn blunder policy. That's actually a good item because. Ooh, able to knock this thing down into red. Uh, because even if we. If they hit the hypnosis, that's good. And if they miss it, it's also good, so. Quite interesting there. Okay, so this thing's just going to keep on recovering. If they're going to do that, we're going to Calm Mind. And you're going to really see why you don't heck with Clefable, alright? It may look like a pink, cuddly blob, but we evil out here. So yeah, we do get that Calm Mind. They're sitting at a little bit above half, which is fine. This thing doesn't have the leftovers because it was able to get its Blender Policy off. Um, I don't know what else this thing's really going to be able to do other than just like Scald, potentially Toxic, but... Clefable don't care about that. So we're just going to click Thunderbolt now that we got a plus one. Um, and we'll kind of see. They are going to <laughs> not be able to hit the Hypnosis because of the electric terrain. So that is clutch. Now we're able to take this thing out and that was unfortunate. So if they didn't know how the electric terrain was going to affect that. So we've killed two Pokemon. We got the Obstagoon out of the way and the Milotic. Clefable is sitting out a nice plus one. And we're looking like we're in pretty good shape here. We probably don't even need to use... What else we brought? Alright, in comes a Ferrothorn, and check this out. This is why we carry Flamethrower on Clefable. Pretty much for this exact reason, honestly. Ferrothorns are always a problem. Um, I really have always liked this coverage set for Clefable. With Thunderbolt, Moonblast, and Flamethrower, you kind of cover all your bases on damage. And, uh, ain't no way you're living that, Ferrothorn. So, Clefable starts us off with a nice little, little 3-0. And, uh... That is the way we like to start these boys. We really be handing out these free L's today. That shit was absolutely free of charge. All right, so battle number one completed. We're gonna get ourselves some rank from that, which is great. We also get a bottle of zinc. They reward you with drugs. Love to see it. All right, so we're not gonna check the opponent's team, but let us continue battling and see if we can uh, we can keep it rolling. I really like Clefable in these. Uh, when they Dynamax, really most fairy Pokemon do really well. Um, so I'm excited to have brought this boy back. Alright, another opposing trainer has already been found. Let's see what we got against Pin Pin. So, what do you got for me, Pin Pin? Alright, you have a scary team. Corviknight. You have the Gyarados of your own. Tyranitar. And Arcanine. Darmanitan. And the Mimikyu. So, I see the Mimikyu coming. Uh, these things are always annoying. Potentially, the Tyranitar. We've come to see that those things with the weakness policy have uh, definitely been scary. Um, I kind of want to... Man, this is I mean, this is a little bit difficult. They also have the Galarian Darmanitan as well. So, honestly, a lot of threats. And uh, matchup is going to be pretty important here. I'm trying to think of how Lucha seems useful. It's great against the Tyranitar. If they end up just leading off with the Gyarados, though, we're not in the best spot. Um, it also doesn't do great against the Corviknight either. I don't think we're going to bring Halucha. I do think we are going to lead off with the Clefable, though. That's because uh, if they lead with the Tyranitar, we're in pretty good shape there, relatively. I also think I'm going to bring Gyarados this time. And then let's bring 
Scarf Dragon. Let's bring the, the, the Sash Cinderace. Let's do it, boys. So I'm expecting them to bring uh, either a Gyarados or a Tyranitar lead. Either way, Clefable does decently. Actually, not really much against the Tyranitar, now that I think about it. I think a Dynamax hit us with that Steel Spike, and that could be a bad time. But we're going to see how it plays out. Clefable worked out well for us earlier. And they are actually going to lead off with the Corviknight. Alright, Pin Pin. So, not the best matchup. Um, we don't really want to take a Steel move from this thing. We do have the ability to hit it pretty hard with a Thunderbolt. I kind of want to switch into Gyarados on this thing. Um, it could start like bulking up. I don't really know what to expect from this thing too much. Do I just stay in and just go for the T-Bolt? We could even just Dynamax. Thunderbolt's gonna be able to do a decent amount of damage. It's just really difficult hard switching into this. I think we're gonna we're gonna switch Gyarados. I think it's probably a good play. We can conserve the Clefable. Odds are Clefable does well against their team. Which is why they kind of had to bring the Corviknight. So alright, we bring in the Gyarados. This thing's gonna iron defense. Oh, sweet Jesus, that is not good. Alright, so we're going to get that defense up, and this is not great for Gyarados because of the fact that we just have physical moves to hit this thing with, and I really should have just stayed in. I could switch into Cinderace, but I really would like to save. Hmm, man. I kind of would like to save you. Hmm, what do I want to do here? Man, I kind of feel like I have to go back into freaking Clefable and T-Bolt. I really should have T-Bolted from the start. Uh, that would have been great, but Iron Defense? I did not expect that at all. Do I potentially Dragon Dance with Gyarados? Let's go for a let's go for a Dragon Dance. If this thing just decides to continue to Iron Defense, we're going to see what this thing even has to hit us with. Maybe this was a bad play. I just really felt reluctant to switch in directly back into Clefable. Yeah, this thing's just going to continue to Iron Defense. Well... Definitely did not expect. Do we just let Gyarados continue to Dragon Dance? So we're sitting at plus one, they're at plus four. Um, so that is not the best for us. Also, Waterfall is our only damage option. Really? I mean, this thing can hit us pretty hard with like a Brave Bird. Man. We really don't care if this thing starts to get up defenses. Because, I mean, we always have Clefable to hit it hard with a T-Bolt. I don't know if I want to Dynamax Gyarados either. I probably do if we want to try to get even... The littlest amount of damage isn't going to hit us with a body press, which is what you tend to see from these things. And that actually does over half, so that's that's more than I expected. Critical hit. Sweet Jesus. Do I have to Dynamax here and go for the Waterfall? I think I do, to be quite honest. So we did not nearly get enough Dragon Dances up, but we're going to have to start whittling down this, this thing as early as we can. We're at least going to be able to Dynamax, get big on him. Which is a very scary Gyarados. I don't know what's scarier, Mega Gyarados or Dynamax Gyarados. Probably Dynamax because this thing just gets access to that ability to increase the speed through Max Airstream. But we got ourselves in a little bit of a scenario here <laughs> with the damn Corviknight lead going for Iron Defense, which is I never expected. All right, so we get the Max guys around for that. This thing Dynamaxing. We're gonna be able to see how much that does, and that's a oh, that's a solid chunk. Okay, Gyarados hitting them. Uh, we just set up the rain in the process, and also we are going hit, to get hit with some life orb damage. But that's fine. This thing just goes for another body press. We take that one, obviously. That critical hit was quite unfortunate. So this thing does actually have leftovers, uh, which does kind of suck. Now in the rain, Max Geyser does do a bit more damage. This thing could potentially Dynamax itself. Uh, I don't know if they're going to want to end up using that this early. As, uh, yeah, no, we're just able to get off our Max Geyser. And uh, let's get a crit. How about that? That is actually still going to be able to knock it out, do the rain damage. Okay, perfect. So, Crisis, no longer, and we are going to get our Moxie. Unfortunately, we were not able to get the speed boost with Gyarados, which is kind of the main idea uh, behind Dynamaxing this thing, is just going for the max airstream to get the speed boost. Plus, when you kill stuff, you get that Moxie, and it's just, it's really just a whole ordeal, because you, really, you cannot stop Gyarados, but all right. Going to bring in the RK9. Uh, mostly, I'm assuming just because this thing is going to like extreme speed. Uh, we have two, we have two dragon dances, but it's just going to be kind of wasted here. This thing's just going to be able to extreme speed. Really, no sense in saving Gyarados to be honest. So we're just going to stay in and click Max Geyser, and they are going to Dynamax themselves. So that's actually going to mean they're not going to click extreme speed. 
And that is rather interesting. So, what is your Arcanine going to do? You're going to bring in an Arcanine on a Gyarados, huh? That's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out for him. So, big doggy. Clifford, the big red motherfucking dog, is, yep, just going to go for a Max Guard, actually. Okay. So, Max Geyser does not touch the Max Guard. And, uh, interesting. So, we shrink back to normal size. Definitely do not, do not want a hard switch here. We just click Waterfall again. And, uh, we are going to be able to outspeed. <laughs> and that's going to knock out the, the Arcanine. So, man, we are just ripping through these ranked players today. The, the Corviknight lead was a little bit interesting. Now we get another Moxie boost. And look at Gyarados actually doing it as well. The Gen 1 boys are out here sweeping today. They do not care about this new generation mechanic. They're like, oh yeah, we'll exploit that. These boys have been OU since the beginning. Next is the Tyranitar, which does get rid of this, the, uh, the rain. But this is fine. We still have the Clefable in the back. They no longer have the ability to Dynamax. And uh, I, that was an interesting play going into Arcanine there. He got the Intimidate, but I mean, still. We're just going to click Waterfall. And let's see what this T-Tar's got for us. You got nothing, buddy. <laughs> this is going to be able to knock you out. So, man, this team is actually working way better than I really even expected. I mean, we knew it was going to be decent because we got them some OP boys, but we actually kill ourselves with the Life Orb, so we don't get the 3-0. But, so far, our differential has been looking pretty solid for this episode. Alright. Not bad. This is great for us moving up the ladder, though, I'll tell you what. Let's see what we're working with now. So we are going to continue, of course. And we got ourselves up to 9. Love to see it. Do we get Ultra Ball when we get to 10? I have no idea. Well... Searching for another opposing trainer. We are 16 and 4. Keep in mind, two of those losses were before this up this series even started. So we're sitting pretty, pretty well. All right. Another opposing trainer has been found. Let us see if we have an interesting matchup. Ooh, okay, okay. Got the Rotom Heat, or the Rotom Wash. I mean, just kidding, not Heat. Also got the Tyran Tyranitar. T Tar is always scary, along with Excadrill. Really probably expecting them to bring that combo, to be honest. And there's also the Charizard, Mimikyu, and a Dragapult. So the reason why I brought Dragapult on this team is basically just because I like to outspeed other Dragapults with Choice Scarf. I think that works well. I would, I kind of want to bring Flapple, but I don't know if it's really going to be all that good. They got that, they got the Charizard around, might potentially bring that. Should I lead Flapple? Am I feeling confident enough to just lead Flapple? To, I think we're doing it. Let's just go for it. Fuck it. <laughs> We're going to bring the Appley Boy. All right. And then I'm going to bring Scarf Dragapult with Clefable. The Mimikyu is a bit scary for us here. But let's hope that they decide to... I think they're probably going to bring the Rotom Wash just because Gyarados, you kind of have to... You kind of have to assess that threat. So maybe we can get a matchup by not bringing Gyarados and see what they're kind of going with. I just want to lead with the Flapple, just because this thing I brought, we had to at least try him one time, so. Sweet pants, bruh. Nice, all right, so they are gonna lead off with the Rotom, okay. So this is great, we get the Flapple lead against the Rotom, and that is fantastic. So they're probably expecting the Gyarados. Look at that shiny Apple boy. I love him so much, all right. So, I could just Dynamax right from the start here, and honestly have a decent time. Just click the Grab Apple. They could bring in the Charizard. I don't really want to go for an Outrage in case they brought the Mimikyu, which they probably did, I'm going to assume. But we could go ahead and Dynamax Max Overgrowth. And let's just get this party started, boys. Let's make this Apple nice and huge. Uh, this is my first time actually using Flapple, so let's see how it works out. I kind of just thought that tossing a Choice Band, giving it a bulkier set, and then just Dynamaxing could be good to kind of avoid the hustle misses, so... Let's see how it works out. We are not going to be the Gigantamax. But we are still a huge apple nonetheless. Alright, is this thing going to switch? Are you going to Volt Switch? What are you going to do? We are actually just going to go first. Max Overgrowth is going to absolutely destroy that Rotom. So, very surprised that that thing stayed in here. And uh, the big apple, young New York boy, is doing it. Also, a very cool shiny too. Love me some green apples. Alright. 
So we get a kill right from the start. Rotom Wash, big threat we no longer have to worry about. I guarantee that thing was a lead because I wanted to counter um, Gyarados. All right, so and they bring the Dragapult. Uh, we just basically click Max Wormwind here and kind of see how this matchup goes. This thing I'm assuming is probably going to have to... Gonna have to Dynamax if it wants to really do anything. And yeah, so this thing is gonna get big on us. Um, we're not super afraid of this thing because I mean, I have my own Dragapult, but I mean, we just have ways to handle this. When you're playing these ranked battles, you kind of have to work around. Dragapult's one of the fastest, just like sweepers in the game. It's super interesting, it's, it's very flexible because it could be both a physical attacker or a special attacker. Uh, this is gonna go for that Max Wormwind. Problem is, we don't know what item this thing's working with. That's going to be able to finish off Flapple, uh, which does suck. But we got a KO with it, and, you know, that's fine. So, kind of wasted the Dynamax, to be honest. We probably did not need to even do that. But I do have the Clefable, which I think is what we're going to be able to go into here. Um, probably going to likely take still some de decent damage because this thing is just... It's Dynamaxed, and it's just a super hard hitter. But... Clefable is a good switch because now it can't go for the Max Worm Wind, but we can just go right for a Moon Blast and get some solid damage. And then we have our own Choice Scarf Dragapult in the back. So, if they brought the Mimikyu, actually, that really puts us in a terrible spot. They probably did. So the Max Phantasm is going to do over half, and it all kind of comes down to if they brought the Mimikyu. To be honest, they probably did, and that's really unfortunate. Wow, that actually almost knocked this thing out. That would have been amazing if... That killed it. Wow. Well. <laughs> so the Dragapult is going to be able to finish us off here. Damn, that would have been clutch if we were able to... If we were able to finish that thing off there. Wow, I did not expect that to... Knock it down to red. Well. Quite a bummer. And it looks like they probably brought the Mimikyu. So it looks like leading off with the Flapple. While it did work out against the Rotom, we kind of got ourselves in, in a little bit of a pickle. Because now it's going to be... I mean, we're going to be able to outspeed this thing because we're Scarf Dragapult, but then the Mimikyu just kind of has a heyday against us, so. Going to get some health back from my Grassy Terrain, and we bring in the Dragapult. So we're Scarf, we have to lock ourselves into Shadow Ball, and uh, actually, really not good for us at all, because their other options are Charizard, T-Tar, Excadrill. So either way kind of got ourselves in a bad spot here well that's okay we can click shadow ball and uh we are able to outspeed does kill their dragapult but it all kind of comes down to what they brought next and unless it's i mean if it's charizard we're in a good spot i wasted my dynamax early that kind of really could have helped out if i was able to dynamax this thing against whatever they decide to bring just be able to switch moves i just really <laughs> i was excited i want to get flappled to Flapple to freaking do something. But for their last mon, it is going to be the Excadrill, actually. So, okay. Bad Boy comes in breaking the mold. It would be fantastic if we were able to click Flamethrower. Uh, but of course, we are Choice Scarf. So we can go ahead and we can click Shadow Ball and hope for the best here. This thing likely is Focus Sash. We see a lot of Sash Excadrills if we're even able to knock it down to it, which we probably are not. It doesn't even do half, actually. That's. That is, I really thought I was going to be able to do over half. Well, this thing gets off an Earthquake. It is going to be able to knock us out with this next one. And we really need either a critical hit or some max damage here. I really should not have brought... I mean, I guess we wouldn't have been able to kill that Dragapult unless we were Scarf. But, damn it. We just clicked Shadow Ball here. That good drill could have gone down. There's still a chance, actually. I'm just kidding. Come on. Die, little emo boy. Nope, it's able to live it. Able to finish us off with an Earthquake. And we are going to take that loss. So, that is unfortunate, but, you know, sometimes that is the way she goes. So, at least we didn't lose to their Dragapult. Damn it, man. Well, we got two wins and a, <laughs> two wins and a loss, which seems to kind of be uh, the recurring theme here. Flapple, probably not the most meta thing to have around. But, it's fine. We are going to quit battling. We usually tend to keep these episodes to about three... Uh, three games per episode. What happens if we... So if we click Ranked Battles again, though, it does show us our rank. And is it going to... Do I have to go all the way through this? I forgot how this even works. Yep. So we got, we're going to lose a little bit of points there. But we're still sitting at 9. In next episode, we're going to be able to get to 10. So 
I'm stoked. We're going to probably get some more usage out of this team because I would like to try to get Haluta to do something. Uh, potentially Cinderace as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. Always a fun series to record. And uh, we're not taking it too seriously, but it is a good time. So thank you guys so much. Don't forget to hit that like button on the video if you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.